Just on my way down here to the season ticket holders parties for the Sacramento Kings here at Hook and Ladder down in Sacramento. And but I've got a talk I want I put together regarding insulin and the effect of fat loss. And it's very important for people who have diabetes type 2. I've got some incredible experience now and information I want to talk about and get to get to the bottom of. I know it's gonna help a lot of people, specifically a friend of mine, Mike, who is dealing with this problem. And I just, I just do not want to see him suffer anymore. So I'm not going to hold this information back. I'm going to put a straight talk together and just get right into it and tell you everything that I need, that I know about this subject and why a doctor is not going to fix you if you have diabetes type, type two. There's nothing a doctor can give you, nothing. All right, stay tuned. Now that a friend's blood sugar is 518. This basically means that the blood sugar is at a criti critically high level. Because the blood sugar is so high, it's creating a bad diabetes type 2. High blood sugar is a really serious problem. And doctors told Mike to exercise more, okay, eat better, change his diet. They didn't do any specifics, just, just eat healthier, change his diet, exercise more, and take this medication, take some pills. And then eventually it's gonna to lead to insulin. And then insulin, it just makes things even worse. It's a gradual process and it just never, never gets better. So this is a very fixable and reversible, reversible thing. And I'm gonna tell you exactly why, how to do it. Passing by here on the bridge, they turn the bridge around right now. Pretty cool. So Mike and anyone else who has high blood sugar, all right, there's a sure fix for this. There's so much sugar in the body that Think of it as like a cup. You've got a cup, you know, the, the body only can fit so much sugar and once the sugar gets poured in, it starts to overflow and spill out all over the body. And this is what's creating the high blood sugar, which can cause, uh, you know, some serious health impl implications. So in order to fix this problem, what, what, you, what you need to do is, you gotta start doing fasting. Start by pushing out the first meal as far as you can. Okay, you wanna push out the first meal as far as you can. By pushing out the first meal as far as you can, the body's gonna start going into repair mode and start to burn the easiest thing that it can get its hands on for energy, which is gonna be sugar inside the body. So by having no food at all in the morning until you're comfortable. Now I told Mike to start, he stops eating at six, I told him to start eating again at 12 o'clock. Normally what he would do is he'd have orange juice and chocolate milk, and this is creating more and more sugar overflowing throughout the body. So in his case specifically, no sugar, no food at all in the morning until 12 wants to do in this situation, including Mike, is also, when you eat, ideally you wanna go into a state, let the body go into a state of ketosis. And what this state of ketosis is, is when you do eat, eliminating the sugar foods from your diet. Okay, and I understand this can be a little harder to do. That's why I'm saying, starting with the fasting first, but going into a ketogenic diet is gonna be very effective for someone like this. Meaning that having no fruit, having no sugar, reading the labels, making sure there is no sugar and really literally no carbs at all. I mean, I don't usually recommend no carbs, but with a person with that high blood sugar, having no carbs in your diet is really important. No pasta, no, pro, no potatoes, nothing, because those carbs can then be converted into sugar and create more of a problem. So since the problem is that serious, I literally recommend a ketogenic diet on top of the fasting. Now working your way up to the ketogenic diet is, is something you could, you could definitely do, but by doing this, by going into a ketogenic diet, which is the low, super low carb diet, and then doing the intermittent fasting process, okay, the body's gonna start going and burning the easiest thing it can get its hands on, which is the sugar inside the, bo inside the body. And then once that's burnt up, then it's gonna start going into the fat reserves and you'll start to notice the waist size going down. So for anyone in this situation, I recommend do a tape measure around the navel if that navel starts going down in a week's time frame by following this, by pushing out your breakfast as far as you can, by going into a ketogenic diet, when the blood sugar is this high, then you know it's working, okay? And then a month later, go back and get your test done and you watch, your blood sugar is gonna come down. This is not something that doctors even talk about or maybe they even know about, but it's just logical and common sense approach because the, what's happening is when there's no other energy for the body to burn, there's no food for the body to burn inside the body, inside, inside the stomach. It starts to use the easiest thing it can burn, which is gonna be sugar inside the bloodstream. It's gonna burn that sugar up, then it's gonna to go to the liver, then it's gonna to go to the fat. Gosh, this information is still so very, very new and cutting edge that 
probably a lot of skepticism behind it, and I completely understand it, but I want you to just think of it from a logical standpoint. If there's no food in the body, if there's no food in the body, even if it's like an 18 hour period, let's say he stops eating at 6 p.m. and he starts eating at 12 p.m., what is the body gonna use to create energy? The body's always thinking human survival. How can it survive? If there's no food in it, it's going to automatically go and start doing the, oh, I gotta go.